Hey there, welcome back to another video. I'm Ivan Calderon, and today I'm gonna to be showing you how to mix beats faster. So recently I did a video titled how to make beats faster and you guys seem to really enjoy that. So I thought today why not show you guys the other half of the equation which is mixing and more specifically a mixing template. Before we begin though I do want to point out that when it comes to beat mixing people tend to do things very differently and that's okay. Personally and I think I've mentioned this before but when it comes to making beats I like to produce in one session and then mix in a different session. In my production session I have my production template which I've shown you guys in that last video and in my mixing session I have my mixing template that I'll show you today. If you work the same way that I do then this will play out perfectly but if you're someone who likes to produce and mix in the same session then no worries you can probably just combine both into like a super template to do everything but as we move forward just keep in mind that this template is tailored to the way that I work which again consists of producing in one session and mixing in another additionally this template will be in studio one of course that's what I use so if you're someone who's watching this video and you use a different DAW then I'd say stick with me still because a lot of the stuff that I'll show can still be applied to different pieces of software they might just not be one for one but but without further ado, let's jump right in. But all right, jumping into Studio One, what I'll do is I'll start to create the template from scratch. And as I create it, I'll explain the theory behind some of the elements. And then at the very end, I'll bring in a beat of my own and show you how everything works together. But okay, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create some buses. Now buses are really important when it comes to mixing because they allow us to affect multiple channels of audio at once, which ultimately saves us some computing power and some time. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to our mixer here, I already have this opened up, and we're going to right click and hit add bus channel, and we're gonna add five of these. So let me go ahead and add two, three, four, and five. Now from here, we're gonna go ahead and label our buses. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the first one and label this one INST, which is short for instruments. The second one, I'm gonna label drums. The third one, I'm gonna label beat. The fourth one, I'm going to label reference or REF for short. And the last one, I'm going to name mastering. Now, from here, you want to go ahead and route these to where they need to go. So we're going to go and select our instrument bus and our drums bus, highlight them both, then click where it says main. And we're going to send that over to the beat. Then we're going to click on the beat bus, click on main again, send that over to reference, and then finally click on reference, click on main, and send that over to mastering. So basically, the signal flow goes like this. The instrument bus and the drums bus is being routed into the beat bus. The beat bus is being routed into the reference bus. The reference bus is being routed into the mastering bus and the mastering bus is being sent all the way out to our actual master bus. So the idea behind this is that whenever you bring in your track outs or your stems, you're going to route all of your instrument tracks into the instrument bus all your drum tracks into the drums bus and this way if you ever want to affect say the drums or the instruments individually you don't have to go through every single one of those tracks and add your plugins instead you can come and drop them into either of these two buses here the same thing works for the beat bus if you want to affect the entire beat at once instead of going through every single track in your beat mix you can always just drop that plug into the beat bus. And one of the examples that I can think of off the top of my head is if you want to add maybe like a filter to give the whole beat like an underwater effect, you don't have to go through every single one of your tracks. You can just drop that filter into the beat bus. Now the reference bus we're gonna talk about in a little bit. So let's skip that for a minute. The mastering bus is where you're going to add all of your mastering plugins. This is where you're going to add all your limiters, compressors, and everything else you decide to add to make your beat loud. Now you might be wondering, well, why can't I just add that to the actual master bus? And the answer is that you technically can, but personally for me, I view the master bus as kind of like a sort of a last window of observation. I know that whenever my signal hits the master bus, it is absolutely done. The only thing that I'll add to my actual master bus are metering plugins, and we'll talk about those in a minute. But they are essentially, you know, plugins that show me numbers and graphs to make sure that I am on track with what my ears are actually hearing. But again, the mastering bus is where you're gonna add all of your plugins to make it loud and to make that showcase version of your beat. Now, moving back to the reference bus, the only purpose for the reference bus is to show us our peak levels before our signal hits the mastering plugins. Now, this is really important, especially if you sell beats online, because you want to be selling the mixed 
version with headroom and having something like this really helps you monitor those levels because if you take a look at the signal flow this reference bus is behind the mastering bus so even if you have all your limiters engaged and you're hearing the beat how you want to this bus because it's sitting behind those plugins it'll always tell you what your peak levels are before it is mastered. But okay, now that we have our basic bus routing set, we're gonna move on to some VCA faders. Now VCA faders are really, really cool because what they essentially allow you to do is control the volume faders of multiple channels at once, which again can save you some time. Now I know that VCA faders are not something that every doll has. I know Logic has something similar called track stacks, I think. And then FL Studio, I don't think you guys have anything um, similar. But if your DAW does have something like this, then definitely use it because it is really, really helpful. So in Studio One, to add them, what you want to do is go back to your mixer, right click, and hit add a VCA channel. And we're going to create three of these. So let me go ahead and do that two and three. From here, let's go ahead and label these. So I'm going to click on the first one and call this one INST, short for instrument, faders. The second one, we're going to call it drum faders. And then the last one, we're going to call beat faders. Now, similar to the bus routing, what we're going to do here is select the instrument VCA and the drum VCA. Click on this little gray rectangle at the bottom and send that over to your beat fader. So the idea behind these VCAs are very similar to the buses. Whenever you bring in your tracks or your stems, not only are you going to route the instruments to the instrument bus, but you're also going to route them into the instrument VCA. Your drums are not only gonna go into the drums bus, but also into the drums VCA. And the idea is that if you ever want to raise the volume of all of your instruments together, you could do that with one fader as opposed to going through every single one of those channels. Same thing with the drums. If you ever want to raise or lower the volume of your drums together, you don't have to do that through every single one of those channels. You could do it with one fader. And you guys probably guess what the beat fader is for. If you ever want to affect the volume of your entire beat, you could bring this up or bring this down and make your life so much easier. Now the question you might be asking yourself now is, well, if I want to raise or lower the volume of my entire beat, why can't I just do it with the master bus here at the end? The answer to that is very similar to before. To me, again, the master bus is a last window of observation. And I know that whenever my signal hits that channel, it is absolutely done. So to reiterate, buses allow us to use less plugins save CPU power and save time by giving us the opportunity to affect multiple channels at once. And VCAs allow us to control the volume of multiple channels at once. But okay, moving on, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to close this mixer track for a little bit. And on our timeline, we're going to create what's called folder tracks. So to do that, we're going to right click, hit add folder track, do that again, add folder track. And the first one, as you can probably guess, we're going to call INST or instrument for short. The next one we're gonna call drums. Now these two here are not regular audio tracks, they are folders. So basically they're going to house multiple audio files once you bring them in. So the idea, whenever you bring in your tracks, your stems, you're going to put all of your instrument tracks into this instrument folder and all of your drum tracks into this drum folder. The purpose for this is purely for organizational purposes. It just makes things a little bit easier. And if you ever need to maybe see a condensed version of your timeline, you can collapse them or expand them as you want. And I'll show you how this works a little bit later when I bring in that beat. But okay, at this point, we have a pretty good skeleton, a pretty good routing schematic for our beat mixing template. And the only thing that's missing at this point now are some plugins. Okay, so to do that, we're gonna head back over to our mixing board. And the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some sort of saturation plugin to our drums bus. Saturation is a really good way to add an extra punch to your drums to make sure they cut through. Obviously, you wanna do proper mixing as well and first and foremost. So volume is important, um, you know, EQing is important, compression, but adding a saturation plugin to the drums at the end and gives it that extra boost that can definitely help them cut through the mix. Now, which plugin you decide to use is less important. You can use whichever one you want. There's plenty on the market. I know uh, Studio One, for example, has a, a stock one called Red Light District, which is really good. You can mess around with this. You also have others like, for example, uh, Sausage Fattener by Dada Life, another really good one. You could also use one called R Bass by Waves, also really good. But if you happen to have an Apollo like I do, a uh, UAD Apollo, you can use my favorite of all time, and that is the voice of God. This thing is amazing. 
But anyway, that stays there. The other thing that I add is my mastering suite into my mastering bus. And for me, that is Ozone 9. I recently did a video demonstrating the plugin and showing it off. So if you wanna watch that, I'm gonna link it up top here. But this is really, really cool because of the master assistant. I use that to do a lot of the legwork for me, especially on something like a beat mix where you just kind of want to create a showcase version to either put up online or whatever. This is really, really good for that. Now, moving on to the master bus, as I mentioned before, here I only add metering plugins. Now, when it comes to mixing, of course, you want to first and foremost use your ears, but it's always a good idea to have plugins that give you a numerical representation of what you're doing just to make sure you're staying on track. But in any case, my metering chain includes the following. First, I bring in a VU meter, and my favorite one is called VUMT by Klanghelm. This essentially just helps me with the gain staging portion of mixing, and I love this one because of all the things you can do with it. So I leave that there, and that is the first one. Next, I bring in an Ozone 9 Dynamics module, and unfortunately, you can only do this if you have the advanced version. That version allows you to use the modules as individual plugins outside of Ozone 9. So if you have that, you can do that. If not, you would just have to bring in a whole new other instance of Ozone 9. But that goes there. And then after that, I add in a scope analyzer, and my favorite one is one called Scope or Shope, not sure how to pronounce that, but that stays there. And then last but not least, I bring in a loudness penalty plugin by a company called Meter Plugs. Now, for the sake of this video, I'm not gonna go into detail for all of these plugins, but if you wanna learn how I use the dynamic section of Ozone in conjunction with the Spectrum Analyzer, I'm gonna refer you to an older video that I did. I believe it was called How to Make Your Beat Mixes Sound Good Everywhere. I'm gonna link that up top here. And if you wanna learn more about the Loudness plugin or Loudness Penalty plugin, then I also recently did a review on that. So I'm gonna link that also up top here. Now, when it comes to pre-adding plugins to a mix to a template like this this is really it for me obviously as I go through a mix I'll add more or take away some depending on what the mix demands because every mix is different but when it comes to adding pre-adding plugins to a template I kind of just leave this here this is where I start for you what I would say is do whatever fits your style and your preference if you want to add more to your template add more if you want to have less have less the idea though is just to have plugins in there even if they're inactive that you know you are going to use most of the time so they're readily available they save you time and they make the mixing process a lot more enjoyable and more efficient but all right to bring this back home and show you how all of this works together i'm going to bring in a beat and specifically the one that i did last week it was a bad bunny type beat so i have the track outs for the beat here and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just drag them over to my timeline. So 808, that to me, that's the drum section, close hat, drum. And as you can see, I'm just dragging them into their folders. You could also just highlight multiple and do it a little bit quicker. Boom, let me close that out so it lets me see things a little better. Snare, open hat, that goes into drums. And then I only had three instruments, so I'm gonna drag those into here. Now from here, of course, you can organize things the way that you want to. Typically I'll do, let's see, something like this. As far as the drums go, I like 808 first, then I like my kick, then I like a snare, then I like the close hat, open hat, and then the crash. So that is how it would look like. Of course, you could always just, you know, color, uh, color code this if you want to. I don't really care too much about that, so I'm gonna leave it how it is. Now we're gonna go over to our mixer, and this is where everything kind of comes together. So I like to use my VCA faders as separators. So basically what I'll do is I'll leave the instrument, let me pull the lead back here. I'll have my lead or my instruments and then the instrument VCA. Then I'll have my drums and then the drum VCA. And then right next to that, I'll have the beat uh, VCA fader. So this is how my mixing board typically looks like after I import uh, the beat in. From there, what, what I would do is we're gonna select our instruments. We're gonna select here where it says main, and I'm gonna send that over to the instrument bus. While they are highlighted, I'm gonna go down here to the, the gray rectangle, send that over to the instrument VCA fader. Same thing for the drums. Select them all, click on main, send them to drums bus, and then down here, send them to the drum VCA. So essentially now what happens is if I want to affect these three sounds, 
with say something like a reverb and I, I want to apply it to all of them. Instead of applying it to every single one of these channels, I would just drop that into here. Same thing for the drums. If I want to affect all of my drums with one plugin, instead of doing it individually, I would just drop it into the drums bus. If I want to affect the volume of these three instruments together, I would just use this. Same thing for the drums. If I want to affect the volume of the drums, I would just use this fader. And as I mentioned before, if you want to affect the volume of everything, then you would just use the beat fader VCA here. But okay, to recap and give you a quick overview of everything that we have, our instruments are all being routed into the instrument VCA fader, which allows us to control the volume of all of them together. They're also being routed into the instrument bus, where we can insert plugins to affect that entire section together. The drums work the exact same way. They're all being routed into the drums VCA fader so we can control the volume. They're also being sent to the drums bus where we can add plugins to affect the drum section uh, together. And both of these VCA faders are being sent over to the beat fader VCA so we can manipulate the volume of the entire beat with one single fader. As far as the bus routing goes, the instrument and the drums bus are being routed into the beat bus so you can add plugins here to manipulate and affect the entire beat. The beat bus is being routed into the reference bus so we can monitor our peak levels before that signal is mastered. That is being routed into the mastering bus, which is where we're going to add our mastering plugins. And finally, the mastering bus is being fed into the master bus where we have our metering plugins. But that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching. As always, if you like this video, if you found it useful, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not already, but I will see you on the next one.